Hi guys, it's Hannah. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to Weeknight Wonders. Today we'll be making chicken udon noodle soup using some of my favorite weeknight friendly ingredients, bone and chicken thighs, and frozen udon noodle blocks. So hopefully we can get all these great ingredients in here and have it ready in half an hour. Let's get started. So today I'd love to teach you how to make a Korean style broth, one that relies on kombu kelp or tajima in Korean and daikon radish as it's known in Japanese or mu in Korean. These are the two ingredients that will really help this broth taste like a Korean soup. So let's start with our bone in chicken thighs. You can use drumsticks. The important thing to note is that we're uh, removing the skins don't throw the skins out. You can fry them in a little uh, pan as you make the soup. Why we're rem removing the skins is so that we don't have excess scum floating to the top and it really just results in a, a lighter, uh, cleaner tasting soup. Our aromatics, we're adding a yellow onion, one that's been peeled and halved, two whole scallions, one whole garlic bulbs worth of garlic and you just want to remove them from their skins. Just a little bit of ginger, uh, I'd say like a small thumb size amount. You don't have to peel it, just slice them uh, really thin into uh, planks. And then our favorite mighty Tashima kombu kelp. Sometimes these are sold in smaller pieces, so as long as they add up to about a postcard size, you're good about a teaspoon of black peppercorns. We're going to fish them out anyway, so don't worry about that. And finally, our daikon. The whole point of this is to add uh, flavor to the broth, but also uh, have it cooked in the amount of time that we want for this weeknight meal, 25 to 30 minutes. So I would recommend maybe no more than an inch or inch and a half. So this piece, while small, might take a while. So we'll just cut this one in half. Just want to talk about daikon for a second. I don't know if it's an ingredient that you guys use much of, but it's delicious and it's good for you. And um, this is how you would normally find a Japanese style daikon at the store. So one note about daikon, the outer skin tends to be like a little bit thicker. So while you can certainly use a vegetable peeler to peel off a little chunk, I'll show you what my mom does, which is using a knife, just slowly uh, remove the outer peel. So the chicken and aromatics are in. We're going to slowly add our cold water in. Just make sure everything is submerged. We're going to bring this up to a vigorous boil. You're going to start to see some scum. We're gonna clean it off, and then we're gonna knock it back down to medium low for about 25 to 30 minutes, just until the chicken and the radish have time to cook through. So it's been a few minutes, and I think we're boiling. Oh yeah. You can see it's pretty vigorous. We're just gonna take this handy little skimmer, one of my favorite kitchen tools, and a key tip for you guys is to have a bowl or a cup with some water already in it because then the scum will just float right off. I'll show you. After you remove the bulk of the scum, we're going to knock back the heat to medium low and put the lid back on slightly ajar and just let it simmer away for about 25, 30 more minutes. So now would be a great time to like and subscribe to Food52's YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. So the chicken soup is done. We're going to take out the chicken pieces and the radish and set it on the cutting board just until they're cool enough to handle. So I do want to give John DeBerry, fellow Food52 resident, a shout out because he has taught me such a great tip on how um, to keep your strainer in place whenever you're using it. And it's just to grab a spoon, put it right there, and that way it won't just fall into the pot or bowl or wherever you're straining into. Thank you, everybody. Everyone has done their job. So thank you, the Tashima kelp um, really lends like a deep umami sea flavor. You don't have to save any of this. It's got, it's gotta go. 
So we're just going to keep the broth hot over a, a low flame and I'm gonna season at this point with both salt and soy sauce. Give it a quick taste. You can always um, add a little more. I'll add a little more salt. Remember, we didn't, we haven't seasoned anything up until this point. And the Korean style is actually to uh, have a little crock of salt, coarse salt at the table so everyone can kind of adjust to their taste as well. So the chicken is now cool enough to handle. You can shred it. Uh, using two forks, like this. I'm actually not that great at shredding with two forks because I usually just use my hands. So maybe I'll just turn to hands now. I think hand shredding is the best for chicken pieces. You can really get a nice um, kind of dainty shred and it takes really well to seasoning this way. So we've shredded all the chicken and I just wanted to bring up a quick point that making uh, chicken broth from scratch midweek uh, might seem a little laborious, but actually it comes together pretty quickly and you can make a lot of these components in advance. So you could do it earlier in the day or maybe on a Sunday, just make the broth, strain it, keep it in the fridge, keep the shredded chicken that's been seasoned, I'll show you that in a minute, keep that in the fridge, just keep everything uh, ready to go so that right before you eat, you just heat up your soup, defrost your noodles, and you'll have a meal ready in no time. Okay. So again, we're back to the chicken. It's been shredded and we're going to season it with a little salt, pepper, and toasted sesame oil. A little goes a long way. So the radish have cooled a bit. We are just going to slice them up into bite-sized pieces. So whether you start with a large piece of Korean style radish or these smaller Japanese ones, ultimately you wanna cut them down into bite-sized pieces. Can you see me through this mist? Yeah. <laughs> Today we're using my very favorite frozen udon noodles. I've even written an article about them on food52.com and I have another uh, recipe that you guys love, stir fried udon noodles on the site. And what I love about them is that they're basically already cooked. What we're doing right now is relieving these frozen udon blocks from their caked state. They're already cooked. We're just putting them in kind of a gentle um, sauna or jacuzzi, if you will, and you, Make sure to read uh, the package directions, but no more than 45 to 60 seconds for these frozen types. So for udon noodles, you don't need to salt the water. Soba, it's the same thing. So just bring your water to a boil and um, put your little udon blocks in. We're gonna zhuzh them with tongs or you, know, you can use cooking chopsticks. Then we're gonna drain them and then just keep them hot. So another very important tip is not to cook your noodles until you're really just about ready to eat. The stock is hot, the noodles are hot, we're plating and we're gonna eat right away. The amount of udon here um, is enough for three to four portions. It's not an udon story, it's a chicken udon soup story. So you don't have to go overboard since we have the radish and the chicken as well. After you put your noodles in, we are ladling in the hot broth, topping it with the cooked mu radish and shredded chicken and add a nice generous amount of fresh scallions and I would top it with uh, lots of fresh cracked pepper or togarashi red pepper flakes. So let's have a taste. At home, I always have a sip of the broth first. Really clean tasting, uh, but flavorful. You can obviously taste that it's a chicken uh, bone based soup, but the kombu kelp tashima adds such a nice layer of depth I think it's time for the noodles, guys. They're just the best. I know I said it's not a udon story, but these noodles are just so chubby, comforting, fun to eat. 
And they're so great for stir fried uh, noodles, noodle soups, really anything or anywhere where you use, you know, rice or pasta. Thank you guys so much for watching. We made a delicious chicken udon noodle soup today that I hope you can recreate at home. I love when you guys tag me and Food52, so don't forget to do that. And I'll see you in the next one.